Hello, and we are back. We're going to be working on the chi-squared test of independence and learning how to use the Casio FX9860 to calculate the chi-squared values. Real quickly, the chi-squared test of independence is used to determine whether two variables from the same sample are independent. An obvi obvious example is in many places, if you were to do a survey of girls and boys, you would notice that in terms of hair length, you'll notice that girls have long hair, uh, very few boys have long hair, some girls have short hair, but uh, the vast majority of boys have short hair. So the question is, is hair length independent of the gender of the student? Obviously, it is dependent. It is not independent. And so chi-squared is a way to mathematically show that these two variables, in this case hair length and the gender of the student, are not independent. They are related, if you will. Okay? So, our textbook has a spiel about the formal test for independence. And I would really recommend that you take a look at this and that you follow this step by step, especially for your internal investigation for IB Mathematical Studies, if that's what you're watching this for that you make sure that you're very clear about each one of these steps. Okay? Now this video is not going to go over each one of these steps in depth. I'm going to mostly talk about how to use your Casio FX9860 to find the chi-squared value. Okay? So, I have a quick example here. A survey was given to randomly chosen customers in an ice cream shop with a favorite flavor. Customers under the age of 18 were defined as children, while customers 18 and over were defined as adults. Here is the results, okay? So at a 5% significance level, test whether or not the customer's flavor preference depends on whether they are a child or an adult. Real quickly, um, let's talk a, a few nuts and bolts. There's something called degrees of freedom. It's the number of rows times the number, number of rows minus one, excuse me, times the number of columns minus one. You see that the there are two columns, there are three rows, so in this case we do three minus one times two minus one. So that's obviously two times one, which is two in this case, okay? Pretty straightforward. A lot of times the IB asks you to show how to calculate the degrees of freedom. Super easy points, you just need to remember to be able to do that, okay? So in this case it is two. What's the null hypothesis? Okay, so the null hypothesis is stating the two variables and saying they are independent. Okay, and the chi-squared calculation um, shows whether or not that null hypothesis is true or not, or actually whether we accept it or reject it. Okay, so the null hypothesis for this situation. Okay, there's two variables. Okay, let me show you. If, if you want, you can try to write down the null hypothesis if you know what it is and pause the video right now. I'm going to show it to you in about two seconds. Okay, pause the video now if you want to give it a shot. Okay, so as you can see here, the null hypothesis is favorite ice cream flavor is independent of whether a customer is a child or an adult. It's independent. Whereas the alternate or alternative hypothesis is that favorite ice cream flavor is not independent of whether a customer is a child or an adult. Okay, so that's how the null hypothesis works. Okay, so now we're going to work on this problem here and we're going to figure out what the chi-squared calculation actually is. Okay, I'm going to show you how to enter this into your calculator and we'll talk about the critical value in a minute. Alright, so here is the Casio FX9860. Um, to enter this information and find the chi-squared, you don't actually go to stat, you have to go to just the regular run. Okay, and it's because we have to create a matrix. We have to create a matrix with this information in it. So you'll notice there's a thing that says MAT, that stands for matrix right here. We're going to push F3, which corresponds with that, and we want matrix A, that's fine. This is going to be 3 by 2, 3 by 2. So we're going to enter 3, exe, 2, exe. Okay, and then it's going to give us a chance to enter those. Okay, so I'm going to enter the data here. Okay, so you can see I entered the data. Fine. 
This is matrix A now. Now I want to do the chi-squared calculation. What I have to do is I actually have to go to menu and now I go to stat. Now, there's no information here. That's okay. If there is information here, that's also okay. It doesn't correspond to what we're doing. Okay? Because we've entered this as matrix A. So we're doing a chi-squared test. So we're going to click test. This corresponds with F3. There it is, chi. And it's two variable. So we're going to go two way. Okay? The observed is matrix A. Okay? So we're going to hit EXE. And this gives us the chi-squared value. Okay? In this case, it's 57.7. Okay? So I'm going to write that down. 57.7. Here we go. 57.7. That's chi-squared calc. Excuse me, I wrote that wrong. It's chi-squared calc is 57.7. Now, here's the idea. Once we have that, okay, the problem will tell you the critical value. Okay, the critical value for two degrees of freedom in this case at 5% significance level is 5.991. Okay, so if chi-squared calculated value is greater than the chi-squared critical value, okay, you reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and in this case, you can see, in this case, the calculated value, right, we have 57.7 is greater than 5.991. Therefore, we reject H sub O, which is the null hypothesis, Okay, and we can accept H sub 1, which is the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so that's how to enter it into the calculator and how to write it out for your answer on your IB exam. Okay, I hope you've learned a thing or two, and we'll see you next time. Toodles!